വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ടു ദ സിക്സ്ത് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ലൈഫ് പ്രോസസ് ചാപ്റ്റർ ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡീൽ വിത്ത് റെസ്പിരേഷൻ ഇൻ ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ്സ് ഇൻ ഹ്യൂമൻസ് എ ടിപ്പിക്കൽ റെസ്പിരേറ്ററി സിസ്റ്റം ഇസ് എ റെസ്പിരേറ്ററി ട്രാക്റ്റ് ദ ട്രാക്റ്റ് ഇസ് ഡിവൈഡഡ് ഇൻ ടു എൻ അപ്പർ റെസ്പിരേറ്ററി ട്രാക്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ലോവർ റെസ്പിരേറ്ററി ട്രാക്റ്റ് അപ്പർ റെസ്പിരേറ്ററി ട്രാക്റ്റ് ഇസ് മെയ്ഡ് അപ്പ് ഓഫ് നോസ്ട്രിൽ നേസൽ കാവിറ്റി ഫാരിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ലാരിങ്സ് Now in this diagram you can see the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. Now lower respiratory tract is made up of trachea, bronchi, lungs, bronchioles and alveoli. Now first about nostril and nasal cavity. Nostril is the external opening of the nose. It is the first organ of respiratory system. principal organ in the olfactory system nasal cavity is a large air filled space above and behind the nose it provides nasal passage for inhaled and exhaled air now this diagram shows nas- nasal cavity nostril you can even see the pharynx larynx Now moving to the next part larynx it is commonly called voice box or glottis it is the passage for air between pharynx and trachea epiglottis acts like a trap door to keep food and other particles from entering the larynx Now moving on to trachea trachea is also called windpipe it is the main airway to the lungs it begins at the bottom of the larynx and ends at the point where trachea branches into left and right main bronchi trachea is surrounded by hyaline cartilage rings which are c shaped this cartilage rings prevents trachea from collapsing now this is a diagram of trachea you can see larynx is above trachea then you can see the rings of cartilage around trachea trachea is branching into primary bronchi now about bronchus a bronchus is a passage or airway that conduct air into the lungs the first bronchi to branch from the trachea are the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus which are also known as primary bronchi they enter the lungs and again branch into narrow secondary bronchi the narrow secondary bronchi again branches into tertiary bronchi two narrow bronchi are called bronchioles no gas exchange takes place in the bronchi this diagram shows bronchus secondary bronchi primary bronchi tertiary bronchi and left and right lungs now moving on to lungs primary organ of respiratory system humans have two lungs it is situated in the thoracic cavity they are spongy pinkish organs right lungs is bigger than the left left lung shares space with the heart they are conical in shape with a narrow round apex at the top and a broad concave base so in this diagram you can see the pinkish color of the lungs in that even you can see the larynx the trachea and the primary bronchi and the second diagram you can see the right lung and the left lung the right lung is bigger than the left and it is having three lobes while the left lung is having only two lobes so each lung is enclosed within a pleural sac that contains pleural fluid membrane surrounding the lungs is called pleural membrane pleural fluid helps to reduce friction between inner and outer walls of the lungs sac divides lungs into lobes right lungs have three lobes and left lungs have two lobes now in this diagram you can see the pleural sac and the pleural fluid which is shown in yellow color Now next moving to pulmonary circulation lungs have a unique blood supply system it receives deoxygenated blood from the heart makes the deoxygenated blood into oxygenated blood this is again sent back to the heart this is called pulmonary circulation next, moving on to the next important part alveolus 
It is a cup-shaped cavity present inside the lungs at the end of the bronchioles. It is the smallest functional unit in the respiratory tract. It is a site for gaseous exchange. The bronchioles lead into alveolar duct. Each duct opens into sacs which contain the alveoli. This picture shows about alveoli. You can see the bronchioles. You can see the duct which is leading to the sac and inside the sac we have alveoli. Next about respiratory surface. Alveoli is the respiratory surface. Gas exchange takes place through diffusion. It has very thin epithelial tissue, large surface area for gas exchange along with abundant capillaries and moist wall. And in this diagram you can see that oxygen which is entering the alveoli is getting uh, transferred into the blood which is shown by the red color and carbon dioxide brought by the blood is brought by, given back to the alveoli. Next about ventilation. Movement of air into and out of the lungs is known as ventilation. It is also known as breathing. It involves inhalation and exhalation. Now structures which help in ventilation. First one, diaphragm. Diaphragm is a sheet of tissue which separates the thorax from the abdomen. It is slightly dome shaped. Now here you can see a picture in which the function of diaphragm is shown. Diaphragm is contracted during inhalation and diaphragm relaxes during exhalation. The next structures are intercostal muscles. Intercostal muscles are muscles which are associated with the ribs. There are two types of intercostal muscles, external and internal. Both of the intercostal muscles help during inhalation and exhalation. Now ribs, ribs moves in and moves out during inhalation and exhalation. It also helps during breathing. Now about residual volume and respiratory pigment. Residual volume is the volume of air remaining in lungs after maximum exhalation and it is represented by RV. Respiratory pigment in human is hemoglobin and in this diagram you can sh see that red blood cells contain hemoglobin which accepts oxygen from the lungs it forms oxyhemoglobin and it is transported to the tissues where oxygen is released for the tissues. Now this flow chart shows the movement of air. Oxygen rich air from the environment enters through the nasal cavity into the pharynx, then to the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles then reaches the alveoli. In the alveoli, oxygen and carbon dioxide are ex exchanged. Carbon dioxide enters the alveoli. It moves to the bronchioles, to the bronchi, trachea, pharynx, nasal cavity and outside the human body. Next is about cellular respiration. This you have already studied. Oxygen which is brought to the tissues helps in converting glucose into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy in the form of ATP. So here, here we come to the last part of the video where we have explained about respiration in human beings both external and internal respiration. Thank you for watching.